What's up guys, the April Patreon rewards are now available. Armageddon, Teferi Time Reveler, and Nekusar the Mind Razor are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description below. What's going on guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Uh, today we're going to be trying out an Orzov Aristocrats deck. Uh, this is actually one not suggested to us by any means, but someone actually requested that we kind of do an Orzov version of this list. This is a list that I found. This is not uh, one that I have cultivated myself. And you'll see there's actually a few things. Uh, one thing in particular that I find very odd is missing, but we'll, we'll give this a shot at it as is and then maybe try and adapt later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and say the one thing that I feel like should be in here that is not is the Witch's Oven combo. Uh, I, that does fit into this deck. It seems kind of silly not to have it. There's a lot of good reason for every card in this list, so we'll talk about that. But I feel like that's a very important piece to this puzzle that is a little weird that it's not here. So regardless, you can see this is a pretty low ground deck. We are running 24 lands, but our, our top end of the curve is the, the Luminous Broodmoth here. Uh, it's a 3-4 with flying. Uh, whenever you control uh, a creature you control dies without flying, uh, return it to to the battlefield with a flying counter on it. So uh, the idea here is, you know, none of our stuff has flying. This just gives us a repeat play. Uh, so anytime anything dies, it comes back. It comes in with flying. We get to attack with it and then potentially sacrifice it again or do something like that. Uh, the idea here is to win off of Bastion of Remembrance uh, as well as Cruel Celebrate. So both of these kind of do the same thing. Anytime a creature you control dies, uh, the opponent loses a life and you gain one life. So uh, the idea is, you know, this is a, a, an Aristocrats deck. We're going to be sacrificing a lot of stuff and dealing damage in the process. Now, the Bastion of Remembrance also spits out a 1-1 uh, Human Soldier uh, as it does this. So this kind of has a built-in thing, uh, which is really, really nice, a built-in creature. Cruel Celebrant, obviously a creature on its own, but doesn't spit anything else out. But doubling up on these is very, very nice. Uh, we also have a Woe Strider as a way to scry through our deck. Uh, it also gives us an escape thing, so we can kind of, you know, as, our, as we fill our yard uh, with some creatures, we can bring this back out uh, later on in the game uh, and kind of finish the game off with this. Uh, again, in the two drop slot, we have the cool, cruel celebrant. We do have priest of the forgotten gods as a uh, sacrifice outlet. This is just a really strong card in any of these sacrifice decks. We've seen this in Rakdos. We see it here. <clears throat> uh, no surprise that this card is in here, and definitely a, a must kill on the opponent's side. Uh, Lazatep Reaver uh, is a one-two for two, but when it enters the battlefield, you amass one, so it essentially spits out two creatures for the price of one, uh, which is very very nice. Uh, absolutely love that, and. Um, it just gives you more stuff to, you know, sacrifice or block with. Uh, it's also great in tandem with Priest of the Forgotten Gods because this alone is two creatures that you can sacrifice here. Uh, Charming Prince, kind of nice as well. You can kind of uh, bounce this kind of thing or um, I don't think... Yeah, I guess you can bounce this as well. Uh, but the idea here is really you can scry, you can gain some life, you can, you can do whatever you need to do to get a little bit of extra value, uh, which is very, very good. Uh, in the one drop slot, we have, of course, the Force Serrated Scorpion, the new Akoria card that really, really does some work in these decks. This is the one that just drains for two every single time. Now, in tandem, of course, with these two, you can drain for a lot more, uh, which is great. And then Hunted Witness, which is kind of an all-star in this list because it's essentially two creatures in one. Uh, if it dies, you get another 1-1. One, one. Uh, now, this in tandem with this just means you you double up on the tokens, so you get a lot of extra stuff here. Uh, this is a really interesting list. I'm kind of excited to try it. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Orzov side of this. Uh, as far as our lands uh, go, we do have two Castle Lockthwain as well as two Ardenvale uh, to really spit out those tokens and then draw cards here. Uh, we're 6-6 six and six in our land split uh, as far as Swamps and Plains, and then 4 Godless Shrine, 4 Temple of Silence. So pretty straightforward land base here. No Fabled Passages, uh, so no way to fetch out any lands, but I think that's actually okay in this list. Uh, even the Temple of Silence is a little bit sketchy just because we really do want to keep things on curve as much as possible. Now 24 lands does sound right to me, uh, but we will see. So again, feels a little odd that we don't have the Witches Oven combo. Um, just because that is such a strong recursive thing. Um, and now I could have edited this list and tried it out, but I'm, I'm assuming there is a reason for it. Now I may be wrong and we'll find that out in these three games here. So let's find out. Um, hmm. 
I mean, yeah, we can keep this. Uh, it's a little weird. Again, we're seeing why Temple of Silence is a little bit strange. Uh, because it'd be great if this was like a godless shrine, right? Um, you play this, you get a hunted witness out. Turn two, godless shrine, get a cruel celebrant. Turn to three, get bastion of remembrance. And then ideally turn four, we get the brood moth. So it's a bit strange, not going to lie. But I think we're going to lean on the temple. Um, we'll pass up on the hunted witness, unfortunately. But we will get the, the two, three here. So... Let's try that. It looks like we're against potentially a red deck. Uh, you would think if it was mono red, they would have played something, I will say, but uh, and we will keep that on top. We do really want to hit our fourth land, so uh, once we do hit our fourth land, though, we're in pretty good shape. <clears throat> okay, sure. It's pretty good. Uh, let's get this out there and... Let's get this out there. Uh, if they do attack in, I'm not going to block. They could just shock this, though. Uh, I'm sure they've got ways to deal with it. Ah, yep. Domery's Ambush. That's a great way to do it. And that's fine. Uh, we'll play the, the Bastion of Remembrance here. And then next turn, we really have a few options. We could go Woe Strider and Hunted Witness, or we can go Brood Moth. We've, we've kind of got some plays. Um, I'm going to block this here. We do need to keep ourselves alive, so that is pretty important. Uh, not to mention, we are going to have to shock ourselves here. So, let's... Hmm... I don't want to run into another kill spell. Uh, I'm a little worried about that. That might be an incorrect thing to assume, but let's do that and let's do this. Um, and we'll pass here. All right. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to try and block here. Hmm. Well, that's not good. That is very not good. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Um... What can we truly do here is my question. Probably not a ton. Um, so we play this, we can block this, but we're still in bad shape here. <clears throat> we'll see what we do. All right, well, that's game. Uh, well done on the opponents and yep. Wow, they didn't even have to attack, man. All right, fair enough, uh, not quick enough as it turns out so we'll go ahead and jump into game two um <clears throat> i don't know uh i will say just in playing this is the second game technically i, I believe i did play one before we started um just to kind of see how it felt in just those two games i feel like this deck is not quick enough um i think it needs a lot of setup uh on a lot of weird mana curve uh kind of places oh my goodness seriously Ugh, I'm going to mulligan. I don't think we can keep that. Uh, I will keep this. <sighs> hmm. Ugh, I don't like that. Um, I'm actually going to put this on the bottom. That might be incorrect, but I, I like the two for one that we get off of this. And if we're against an aggro deck, we're going to need it. Uh, unfortunately, that's just kind of the way it works. And here, again, the temple, um, not really great for us here. I'll keep it here. Um, those tap lands, man, they, they do a number on you. So we do have to discard a card here. Um, yeah, let's get that out. Uh, as much as I like it, I do think, you know, we're playing the two here for sure uh, with Cruel Celebrant. So let's just get this out. <clears throat> It's an interesting mono blacklist without Luris as well. Well, yep, yep.
Hmm. Hmm. Let's play Priest. They're going to get a card out of our hand here. Uh, oh, a non-creature. I'm sorry. They are not going to get a card out of our hand. I think this is correct to play. If they don't have an answer, we get to... Well, <laughs> they do have an answer. Um, all right. Yep, yep. Let that enter tapped. Let's play this. Let's double up here a little bit. Play Scorpion, play Scorpion. Just so if they do have at least, you know, if they have a kill spell, they kill one thing, we can at least still get rid of some stuff on the field here. If they've got two, they've got two, but they're going to burn them. This does not feel anywhere near as good, though, I will say, as the Rakdos list. Um, the Lurus La Rakdos list is quite good, in my opinion. This doesn't feel anywhere near like that, but... <laughs> yep. Good thing we didn't play Woe Strider there, uh, as they could have just Murderous Rider that and then exiled it, in which case we would have been in bad shape. They did not attack. Let's play out Woe Strider. And we'll play out Scorpion. We'll pass. I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, because we definitely need to uh, make sure we don't hit a land. Um, need something good here. If they swing in, I'm going to take this. Uh, we're, we're at a healthy life total. I'm not super worried about that. Let's attack. If they want to block one, that's okay. We do have to start, you know, at least mitigating the lifelink off of this, if nothing else. Here we get to do a little bit of a trick. Just to save ourselves that damage and get a scry. All right. Uh, also, that op the opponent probably should not have played their land there, at least not until second main. Oof, that's not good for us. Um, now we can cast a lock flame. Let's go ahead and do that. Cruel celebrant, huh? I am not gonna attack with the woe strider. I do not want them to uh, kill that here. That is our way of sacrificing, so we need to be very careful with that. Wow. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. Not much we can do about that. Um, mm, mm -mm. Nothing we can do. Let's just go ahead and take it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a it's a creature. <laughs> I'm going to just do this. They can block here. Um but then they're less likely to want to sacrifice a creature, so This is such a like very straightforward deck, but unfortunately it works quite well. <clears throat> Mono black aggro for the win. Like I said, this deck does not feel anywhere near as good as I think it needs to. Um, another Woe Strider. Yeah, we just, we lose, unfortunately. Not much going on there. Um, let's go ahead and jump into game three. Not feeling great about this one. Uh, 
it just does not feel like it needs to. Um, we'll we'll give it one more shot here, and we'll we'll probably try and do a, a second video with this one. But I gotta be honest, not expecting it to do very well. Um, it just doesn't seem to have what it needs to. I guess I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it needs, but. Now this is this could be a very good hand, and the opponent did mulligan, so let's let's go with this. We'll lead on Godless Shrine. We'll kind of figure out what exactly we want to do on turn two here, uh, and then we do have the Bastions. Okay, we're against a Life Link deck. It looks like Mono White, maybe. Yep, looks like it. This is going to be an interesting matchup, actually. Um. Let's play this out first, and then we'll we'll lead on these bastions next turn. Whew, that's quite good. I assume they just well, I don't know what they lifelink, maybe? I don't know why they wouldn't just give this like vigilance. Indestructible? I mean, that's fine, but we still get to block it. Gain a life, I guess. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, I'm not going to attack here. Kind of just want to be able to block uh, what they've got going on. Did they not? Okay. Actually. Yeah, I'm just going to block here. I'm going to take two. That's fine. We'll just drain for one. Ideally, we want to keep our critical mass of creatures up. I don't really know why there. It was kind of an odd time to do that, but sure. Um, let's do it again. They can exile a permanent here. Which is not going to be fun for us, because they could probably get rid of a Bastion. I don't actually think they will at this point. I think they'll just continue to plus. Ugh. It's going to be a rough matchup. Um, I mean, just imagine this deck against, like, a Garuda deck. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they would have already probably gotten Garuda out last turn. In which case, this just does kind of nothing. I mean, we block for a while. And that's about it. <laughs> um... It just doesn't seem to do enough. It just doesn't seem to get there for me. Um, also, last turn we probably should have played the temple, but that's okay. Definitely should have played the temple. Um, let's get another bastion out. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And we'll get cruel celebrant. Nope. Here they might exile the Cruel Celebrant. I could certainly see that. I mean, like, the thing is, like, in this matchup, for instance, like, sure, we're not dead, but we're also not doing enough. Like, we kill a cr or we block a creature, and that's good, uh, because we'll be able to drain for quite a lot, but they've gained so much life, it just doesn't matter. Um, and I think that's part of the struggle here. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that, and let's do that. It just doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, we're going to drain for a lot. And that's good. It's great. But it's not winning us the game, I don't think, because all we're doing is blocking. Like, I don't think we can really swing in all that well. I 
I'll keep that uh, just because it is a good blocker. Um, we're going to flicker. And hey, maybe we win this. I don't know, but I just don't. Uh, I don't have high hopes. Um, and I think that this is a very outlier kind of thing anyway. I don't think this is a, a great deck by any means. We're not going to attack. Uh, here we will get, you know, a little amass token as well, so we're we're building up our board, but um, it's just not going to do enough, I don't think. What I would think they might do is exile something. Okay, they're going to Banishing Lane on the Cruel Celebrant, I assume. Yep. And then minus Gideon to get one of these guys. So then we're only draining for like two apiece. No. Okay. Yep. Um. We'll do this. We'll say that in itself, that one little kind of interaction there feels great. Um, we're just going to do this here. It's not going to. We'll pass. Vanishing light. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why they're not hitting the bastions, because like that's the the much more important card. <laughs> uh we don't care if we get hit. Like, that just doesn't matter. They could have gotten two of those though. I think that was not correct. But see, this is a place where Witch's Oven combo would be really quite amazing, I think. I'm keeping this around, by the way, uh, solely because if we can flicker it, we will. <laughs> if we draw another Charming Prince. That's not helpful. And this is what I'm talking about. Like, yeah, we're in a great position technically, but we're not really doing anything. I'm going to keep that on top because it does give us a flyer at the very least. And they're gaining life. I mean, we're essentially at just a standstill where they're gaining enough life that it doesn't matter. We're gaining enough life that it doesn't matter. We're just not in the ideal position. Hmm. I mean... And technically now we are at a slight disadvantage. Um, but the Broodmoth is going to help us a little bit because we're okay now losing some creatures. Like, it's fine. Um, and unless they draw, like, a Banishing Light, we're not in a position where this is going to, to just die. Um, well. <laughs> yep. That's a little annoying, but it is what it is. Uh... Yeah, I mean, we'll see what we draw this turn, but I, I don't see us winning this. We will give it this draw. Just going to take it. Alright, I'm out. Unfortunately, that just 
this deck I don't think is getting there. Uh, we'll give it another uh, another video just to see. Maybe we're missing something. Um, I think we had somewhat of a chance to win that, but I think it was very, very slim. And obviously they got multiple Banishing Lights, which really set us back. I just don't think this deck is good enough, guys. I really don't. Um, but we'll, I mean... We'll give it another shot, but I don't think it's very good. So hopefully, regardless, though, you did enjoy this video. Um, and if you have a better version of this list, please send it my way. I think Witch's Oven kind of needs to be in here. I don't know really why it isn't, uh, but, you know, we'll see. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next gameplay video.